Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Cake Flower brings you Grand Central Station. Its targets shining rails in every part of our great country are aimed at Grand Central Station, part of the nation's greatest city. Drawn by the magnetic force of the fantastic metropolis, day and night, great trains rush toward the Hudson River, sweep down its eastern bank for 140 miles, flash briefly by the long red row of tenement houses south of 125th Street, dive with a roar into the two and one half mile tunnel which burrows beneath the glittering strike of Park Avenue, and then. Central Station. Crossroads of a million private lives. Gigantic stage on which are played a thousand ground stages. <laughs> Is a love story. For stage struck souls who have at one time or another been intoxicated by the heady perfume of the theater. But when you feel that deep within you there burns that divine but dizzy spark which will win you fame and fortune back of the footlights, remember, the door to the stage is not on the great white way. It usually opens off an alley. Outside just such a stage door, Across town from Grand Central Station, a tired line of hopefuls wait in the cobble-paved alley. The great Leslie Ashton is casting a new play, and near the head of the line, two pretty girls are talking. Well, Julia, how much longer do you think we'll have to send our card to stage door before the great Mr. Ashton will see us? Oh, we'll get there. Why, we will up almost three feet in less than half an hour. Why do they do this? Just to weed out the weaklings, Ellie. It takes a lot of stamina to become an actor. Well, I've never felt so weeded out in all my life. I ought to give up and go back to Cleveland. Oh, come on, Ellie. Chin up. That isn't like you. But I've got to be fair to David. He generously gave me a year to make good. Yeah. He's nice. Mm. I guess I should have married him last year. Oh, but, Julie, I just had to have my chance at the thing. Oh, sure. You got that driving little fire way down inside you that you can act and... Nothing will put it out until you try. I, I don't know. Sometimes I think maybe I'm just not an actress. But in the old country, my mother used to... Excuse me. Well, Excuse me, please. Well, oh, oh, thank you, Pa. Oh, oh, please. Get, can I get through to the stage, oh, please? Hey, you hold everything, <laughs> mister. What are you crying out for? The part of a gate crash? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just have... Uh, yes? Well, well, why don't you take your place in line? It's not too bad. We have moved out nearly 12 feet since noon. Well, I... Oh. Was, uh, is this waiting in line the usual procedure for uh, actors? Yeah, but you'll get used to it. What's your name, Hanson? <laughs> Russell. Russell what? Well, uh, just call me uh, Russ. Uh, Russ Russell. All right. Mm -hmm. Russ Russell. Boy, there is a phony stage name if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't mind her. I'm Ellie Bateson, and, and she's Julia Raber, my roommate. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> Glad to know you both. Uh, actresses? Yeah, we're trying awfully hard to be. Oh, even though it means hours of this kind of standing in line? Do you know of a better way to get in to see the great producer? You mean Leslie Ashton? You know it? Why, I... Oh, hey, we'll be here. I... Uh, look, I, I'm next. Gee, Ellie, uh, is my lips uh, on? Oh, no, no. My lips on straight? Mm -hmm. Oh, say, 
Just a, a bit nervous. Oh, but you but... look wonderful, Julia. Go in and knock him cold. Okay, Ellie. Cross your fingers. Yeah. Cross your toes. Okay. Cross your heart. I'm... Here I go. I'll keep my oh. fingers crossed, too. <sighs> Say, uh, uh-huh. tell me something. Is, is, is it always like this? Uh, why, this is the bright side, Mr. Russell. At least we know that somebody's doing something inside this theater. They are casting a new play. They need actors and actresses. They might, um, uh, they might just possibly make you a type. My type? Mm, let me see. Uh, you're the, um, well, uh, well, I guess you're the Tweedy, Pipey, Scotty type. <laughs> what in heaven's name is that? <laughs> Young playboy. Uh, fond of coffee dogs, uh, likes to smoke a pipe, casual dresser. Oh, 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 I get it. Because of his baggy tweed suit, oh, is that well. it? <laughs> you know, you're just right in it. If you want my advice, wear this brown tweed suit every time you go for passing. With the same soft shirt and, and bully tie your set on. All right, I will. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact. Oh, don't tell me that it's the only one you have. Huh? Oh, yeah. well, it, uh, yes. It, <laughs> it, it, it is my best suit aside. At least it's the one I have. I lose. Oh, that was quick, wasn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, well, what happened, Julia? The great Leslie Ashton is sitting with his secretary in the depressing darkness of that empty theater. And on the stage is one lonely, naked electric light on a tall stand. You walk into that hard glare. You turn around, give out with your name, address, telephone number, and previous day credit, all in your very best drama school diction. Oh, uh, what did you tell him for previous day credit? Well, oh, what could I tell him? A year with a traveling tent show in Oklahoma, two years of summer stock in Minneapolis. <laughs> oh, dear, this is oh, You can't get into the theater because you've had a job, and you can't get a job until you've been in the theater. No, no, no. Here, here, Julia, what is this? <laughs> Come on. Uh, as you say, you're so fucking I'm sorry, but it's, it's so unfair. So mean. I might just as well have been a prize heifer walking into the ring to be judged. Hey, say, uh, Ellie, watch the line. You're next, aren't you? Oh, yes, my friend. Good luck. Uh, it better be good. If I don't hit the judge for this time, I'm through. Well, keep your chin up. Keep your chin up. Keep your chin up. What's all the delay? Next, please. I am waiting, and I haven't got all night. Uh, right here, Miss Ashton. Well, it's about time. Uh, closer into the light, please. Yes. Your name, address, and telephone number? Elder Dayton, 636 West 29th Street, Long Acre 5, 9970. Now, how long since you've worked? On Broadway. Of course. What are your previous Broadway credits? I, uh, I haven't been on Broadway. Yes. My only stage appearances have been with a little playhouse in Cleveland. But my mother was a great lady of the theater in Europe. She she had the gift and she taught me. Oh, no, not just the little tricks of the stage, but how to feel and, and truly breathe life into a part. Uh, 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 that's all very interesting. <laughs> uh, but, uh... Oh, it's so humiliating to send me under this, under this spotlight and be inspected. <laughs> like a... Like a... Well, now, look here, Look here yourself, Mr. Ashton. You may be a wonderful director, as they say you are, but you are not a human being. You do not have the sense of human instinct of kindness anywhere in you. Uh, And that's what you discovering talent you couldn't even recognize an actress unless you brought Captain David from other Broadway producers. Goodbye. In a few moments, we'll return to Pillsbury's Grand Central Station drama. Let her go, Pop. Yes, sirree. Their first ride in their 1946 Chrysler Royal sedan. Some occasion, eh, son? You bet. Well, friends, that could be you driving that Chrysler sedan. Of course, you may not be able to buy a car like that for a long time. But you do have a mighty good chance of winning one. In the Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flower Discovery Contest, Pillsbury is offering a 1946 Chrysler plus 310 other wonderful prizes. And all you have to do is tell what you've discovered about Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake. Just complete this sentence. I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake are... And mail your entry, together with one Pillsbury Snow Sheen box top, to Pillsbury, Box 311, Minneapolis 1... Minnesota. There'll be more details about Pillsbury's exciting discovery contest a little later in the program. So, keep listening. And now we return to Pillsbury's Grand Central Station. Well, it's no 
Park Avenue penthouse about that. That is home to Julia and me. Oh, it's swell. And it was swell of you to ask me up, Ellie. Mm-hmm. Frankly, I guess I did it because I sort of felt responsible for you not getting your chance at that. Oh, never mind about that. After what you went through, then I guess it doesn't matter. Nothing matters at the moment except coffee. You two kids sit down. I'll have a perking in a minute. Take the big chair off. Huh? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Say, Say, you know, that's a beautiful bunch of flowers. Oh, yes? I'm glad you like them. They are last, sir, my favorite. I'm like the poet. If I have the two loaves of bread, I sell one. And my last there to feed my soul. To feed your soul? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The sight of last there always gives me new courage. Oh, we had a lot of it at home. I used to think it was my lucky flower. Well, I guess you need a little new courage now and then. Sorry, Ashton, if that's your son. Maybe I shouldn't have told him off. But, well, that's over and done with. <laughs> Too bad you and Julia couldn't have been present for my first and last appearance on any Broadway stage. Oh, no. Oh, no, Ellie, you're not really through with the theater. Well, other women are happy with their families and little white houses and green lawn. Uh, but, but, but what made you come to New York, Russell? What made you try the stage? Well, uh, well it's, it's kind of hard to say. You Just put me down as a guy who loves the theater. Exactly. Why do you want to be an actor? You, you don't really, do you? Why not? Well, I, I, I mean, you're not an extrovert or a show-off. You're sensitive. You shrink from the idea of attracting too much attention. And actors don't. Oh, no, no. They they love it. They have to, to succeed. Why, some of them even hire press agents to publicize their wins and tantrums. They really live in a world of make-believe. Oh, you see, I know the failings of the people in the theater, but I love them anyway. Well, I'll never be an actor now. Look. Look, Ellie. Why don't you try again? How do you know? Maybe My next time got all behind me. There's a man waiting for me in Cleveland. Oh. Oh, see. Waiting to marry you, huh? Mm-hmm. You love him? I, uh... I, uh... Yes, I think so. Excuse me. Oh. Hello? Is any day complete? Yes, speaking. by tomorrow. Really? Yes, Miss Ashton. That goes for every member of the cast except you. I'm delighted with what you're doing. You have a natural sense of timing and the makings of a fine actress. Thank you very much. But don't overstudy the part. I don't want you to go stale. You villagers go for your costume fitting at four o'clock and the rest of the cast back here at eleven tomorrow morning. That's all. All right, I'll be back at 11, everybody. Russell? Russell, where are you? Over here in the stage box. Oh, oh, now I see you. Oh, let's go up to my place for coffee. I'm out on my feet. How was it, Arthur? Oh, swell. Oh, Ellie, Ellie, you're going to be all right. I hope you don't mind having to sneak in the stairs like this. They don't like to have spectators at the early rehearsals. Oh, that's all right. I don't think they'll throw me out. If Mr. Ashton knew you were here, he might not like it. Hmm? Ashton saw me here today. He did? What did he say? Uh, he said hello. You know it? Oh, in a way, yes. Well, that means... That, that means it. I can come every day if I want to. This coffee is stronger than a Polish wrestler. I ran it through three times. I hope you don't mind, Russell. <laughs> Not at all. Now, and here's yours, Ellie. Thank you. Uh, Russell, one lump or none? As if we had sugar. <laughs> none, thanks. I'll play this just as it is. Well, how'd she do, Russell? You saw the rehearsal. Oh, oh, she's going to be good, Julia. 
You should see her in that final scene. You know, she, she gives me that old lump in the throat every time she does it. <laughs> I'm going to do some more work on it. It's a beautiful scene. Do you think I'll go? All right. Whatever you're selling, we don't want it. <laughs> Does uh, Miss Ellie Dason live here? Oh, well, uh, yes. Well, ah. <laughs> Hello, Ellie. Golly, it's good to see you. Come in, come in. Oh, this is my roommate, Julia. Uh, howdy. Hello, Julia. This is Russ Russell, David Parker. Nice to meet you, Miss Parker. Uh, Russ Russell? He's an actor, and he won't fight you. Oh, well, same to you, Mr. Russell. Any friend of Ellie's is a friend of mine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, too bad you couldn't get here in time for Ellie's rehearsal today. Rehearsal? Yes, didn't you get my letter? I got a part on Broadway, David. The play opens in two weeks. A swell that's, part. That's not keeping your bargain, Ellie. You wanted a year to make a success on Broadway. Well, you haven't done it. Besides, you can't like living here. This... Oh, Julia and I expect to find a better place the minute the show opens. But suppose it flops. I've read about these things. Three out of four plays are failures. This one isn't going to flop. Oh, no, no. It can't. Look, Ellie, I came to say this, so I'm going to. I've thought about it a lot. Which do you want? The theater or me? Why, David, it now, isn't look, David, like you uh, to... I, uh, I know this is none of my business, but... Well, you, you wouldn't want her to give up her big chance now after she's waited so long for it and worked so hard. Wait, for the rest of your life, you and Ellie would always wonder what might have been if she'd gone ahead with the play. Now, David, the least you can do is wait until opening night, and if the play is a yeah, flop... Yeah, sure, it's never a flop until the closing notice is up on the call board. You owe that much to Ellie. Is that the way you want it, Ellie? Mm-hmm. You want me to wait, darling? Would you? Would you, David? If I fail this time, if I don't make a go of my big chance, I'll marry you the very next day. I'll go with you anywhere, later. All right, my sweet. Thank you. You win. I'll wait until after opening night. The curtain falls. In just a moment, Pillsbury's Grand Central Station drama will continue. A bride of two weeks. She's been married two years. But now Bill's out of the army and... Guess what, Bill? I baked you a homecoming cake. Now, honey, I love you dearly, but... But that so-called cake you made out of camp. But, darling, that was before I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen cake flour. And what a delectable difference that discovery can make. Why, I use the very same recipe, and my cake always comes out perfect with Pillsbury Snow Sheen flour. Then put that discovery to profit. Write it down and submit it for a prize in the Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flour Discovery Contest. Oh, picture me and Bill in that new Chrysler. But think of the hours you'd save with one of those Westinghouse laundromats or a streamlined Westinghouse iron. Just complete this sentence in 25 words or less. I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cakes are... I might say, I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cakes are... Always a success. How about adding... They're satin smooth and feathery fine. And so fluffy and tall. Mm. And my snow sheen cakes have a scrumptious flavor. Swell. You can send as many entries as you like, but enclose a box top from Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flour with each one and mail to Pillsbury, Box 311, Minneapolis 1, Minnesota. Remember, just finish the sentence, I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cakes are, and mail together with one box top from Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flour to Pillsbury, Box 311, Minneapolis 1, Minnesota. And you may be the winner of that brand new 1946 Chrysler sedan, or one of those 310 other exciting prizes. And now we return to Pillsbury's Grand Central Station drama. Now, Ellie, keep it calm, will you? Hundreds of plays have opened before. Oh, Julia, I'm so excited. I- I'm so excited. Look, look, look at this dressing room. Look at the flowers and these telegrams. Oh, everybody, just everybody's wishing me well. Everybody? You, you mean Russell? Oh, he hasn't forgotten. I'm sure he hasn't. He said last night that he'd be here to cheer for me. Maybe he, maybe he hasn't got a dress too. Then he'll come in his tweet. Oh, I just got to know he's out there tonight. Uh, I, I, you what, Ellen? Uh, I've come to depend on him, Julia. 
Just knowing you were out there in the house all during rehearsals has helped me. Helped me so much. Oh, I've been playing this whole show to him. May I make a slightly corny observation, dear? What, Julia? You love that guy. There's no life for me without him. That's what I thought. Well, you better be good tonight. David is out there in the fifth row, ready to pounce on you and haul you off to Cleveland if the play is a flop. Yes? Well, Lily, how do you feel? Hello, Julia. Hello. Oh, Mr. Ashton, will it be all right? Do you think I'll be all right? My dear, you'll be a sensation. You'd better be, or our backer is going to lose an awful lot of money. Our angel? Who is he? You don't know the angel of this production, uh -uh. Mr. Lowe? Well, it's about time you met him. He sent you this box of flowers. Matter of fact, he made a special point of asking me if I'd bring them back to you. Flowers from the angel? How it Oh, yes. oh what's the matter, Ellie? Uh, do you say this is from our angel? The man who financed this show? Yes, why? Lobster. An armful of lobster. Russell. Yes. Russell. Hmm. An angel in an old tweed suit. There's the call for on stage. Lenny. Lenny, oh, my dear. You mustn't think of it. You see, darling, I'm not afraid, not anymore. Now I know that as long as there is darkness, just as surely will there be a sunrise. A golden, glorious sunrise for this land of ours. Ours to plow and to feed and to harvest. Ours to watch like loving parents while it sleeps on its winter blanket of snow. Ours to tend with deep devotion as it wakes to fragrance in the spring. Ours, darling. Our land, Lenny. Our world. Magnificent. Oh. Wonderful. You bowl them over like a... Well, your name will be all over this town tomorrow. Oh, thank you. But, but, but how do you think the critics like it? Well, I talked to two of them. Yes. They didn't like the play too much, but every one of them has rushed off to write a rave notice about you. The play failed? I'm afraid so, but what's the difference? You're made. I've got a new star on my hands. Now, don't sign anything with anyone else, Ellie. Uh. Promise. Not yes. until I can get a new contract drawn. Uh, yes, yes, of course. But, but the play is a flop. I'll find you another play. A dozen. Where's Russell? He's coming. I'll see you later. Remember, just don't sign anything. Excuse me, Mr. Ashton. Oh, oh, Ellie, you were terrific. Russell. Oh, Russell. Oh, I'm proud of you. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what, dear? You're Russell Lowe. This is your play, too. You had your money in it. Oh, that. Oh, don't worry about that. That doesn't matter now. We'll find you another play, a better one. <laughs> well, Ashton said if the play flopped, you'd lose a lot of money. Then I saw your flowers at that lovely lock there to, to give me courage. I, I did so want the play to be a success. <laughs> I, I tried, Russell. I tried. I gave the very best I had in this. Oh, I know. I know you did, Ellie. And you did it for me. Why, Ellie, you made the author's words electric. Your part came alive and glowed. It lighted your inner feeling. That's what's important, don't you see, dear? Yes, yes. Because I love you, Ellie. You do? Oh, from the moment I saw you outside our stage door. The day you took me for an actor. I, I love you too, Russell. I've known it ever so long. You'll marry me? I'd marry you tomorrow, Russell, except... Except what? Ellie, oh, Ellie, you did it, kid. You really got it. I always knew you did. Thank you, Julia. Hello, David. Congratulations, Ellie. I... Well, what Julia said goes for me, too. What do you mean? You're wonderful, Ellie. You're really wonderful. You're an actress, every bit of you. I sat out there watching you. 
watching you walk right out of my life. You belong in the theater, Ellie. And you mustn't give it up for me or for anything in the world. Not for me, not for Cleveland. But I promise. And I wish you all the success in the world. And you too, Russell. Thank you, David. Well, Julia and I think that you two might want to be alone. She has an idea she wants to show me in New York. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is, if it's all right with you, Ellie. Oh, why, of course. I, I think it's a wonderful idea. And David. Yes, Ellie. Thank you. You're very sweet. Well, if you ever play the Hannah Theater in Cleveland, Ellie, I'll be right there in the front row. Goodbye. Goodbye, Russell. Goodbye, Ellie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Coming, Julia. Okay. Well, as Thackeray said, come, children, let us shut up the box and the puppets, for our play is played out. So long, you bright little starlet. So long, Russell. Goodbye. Bye. Tell me about Cleveland, David. Isn't it nice as they say? <laughs> you know something, Ellie? Uh-huh. She's a good gal. Uh-huh. I don't know, Ellie. I, I, I love theater people. <laughs> Especially you, dearest. <gasps> Darling, remember what you asked me a minute ago? Mm-hmm. I asked you to marry me. Yes. Yeah. And you said you would marry me tomorrow, except... Yes. Yeah. I said, except what? Except tomorrow is so far away. Oh, darling, couldn't we get married tonight? <laughs> Another grand performance from Grand Central Station. I know you're all anxious to learn the names of the Broadway stars presented by Pillsbury in today's drama. And I'll tell you in just a moment. But first... Well, what's that? Well, I thought somebody ought to ring bells for that brand new 1946 Chrysler you're giving away in the Pillsbury Discovery Contest. And how about the five laundromats? Those beautiful new Westinghouse automatic wonders that take the hard work out of wash day. And the 305 streamlined Westinghouse Adjustomatic Iron. 311 sensational prizes in all. Just write 25 words or less to complete this sentence. I discovered Pillsbury Snow Sheen cakes are. And enclosed a Snow Sheen box top with each entry. Oh, you mean I can send in more than one idea? Why, as many as you want. Just remember, though, one Pillsbury Snow Sheen box top with each entry. Entries are judged for sincerity aptness, and originality by impartial judges who are not employees of Pillsbury Mills Incorporated. All entries and ideas become the property of Pillsbury, except everyone in the continental United States is eligible to enter, except those employees of Pillsbury Mills Incorporated and their advertising agencies. Well, this sounds better and better. Give me the basic details again, will you, George? Sure thing. Just complete this sentence. I discovered Pillsbury's no-sheen case are... In 25 words or less, include one Pillsbury Snow Sheen box top and mail to Pillsbury, Box 311, Minneapolis 1, Minnesota. Contest ends midnight, December 22nd, so get started now. Hand me a pencil, George. I'm about to have a brainstorm. Swell. Just mail that brainstorm to Pillsbury, Box 311, Minneapolis 1, Minnesota. Who knows? That 1946 Chrysler may have your name on it. And now our cast. Today's Grand Central Station drama, Larkspur to Feed the Soul, was written by Charles Holden and starred Bill McCura as Ellie and Don Appel as Russell. Julia was played by Nancy Douglas, director Ashton by Francis Compton, David by Blaine Cordner, and your narrator is Jack Arthur. We leave Pillsbury's Grand Central Station until next week at the same time. Listen for the train whistle and hear another complete and original radio drama with a great Broadway cast starring Joy Hodges, recently returned from a USO tour overseas playing the lead in Anything Goes. And Stacey Harris, now on Broadway in Irving L. Jacobs' production of Harry Brown's play, A Sound of Hunting. This is George Baxter saying goodbye from Grand Central Station until next week for Pillsbury Mills. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 